Hello and welcome to lesson 54 of the Learning Guitar series. In this particular lesson we're going to keep discussing uh, the concept of uh, double stops and uh, we're going to look at the octaves, which are actually very interesting and uh, very useful uh, type of uh, double stop, mm, not only in creating uh, adding to our harmony approach, but uh, also to our soloing. And I think uh, if you are aware of the works of, uh, say, Wes Montgomery or George Benson and many more, I mean, they did uh, a fascinating use of octaves in, in their sort of work from time to time. But octaves is also something that we can use in our pop playing. We can use it to create interesting riffs, uh, say, indie type of playing. You know, the sky is the limit. Before I'll show you the PDFs I prepared for this lesson, um, I would like to thank the, the, the people who are supporting this project on Patreon. Uh, as usual, it's now many of you at this point, I think it's 13 of you. And, uh, you know, I would like to kindly thank all of you for you know, being interested in this project and supporting it. Um, of course, I also want to thank the, 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 the people who subscribed so far to YouTube and um, uh, if you find this, uh, this, uh, these lessons I'm putting together uh, about the language of, you know, guitar, um, please do consider the idea of supporting the project of Patreon. Okay, let's move on. As you know, the guitar, uh, unlike, uh, say, a piano, it's, uh, it moves on two planes, it moves vertically and it moves horizontally. So, as usual, we're going to discuss double stops from uh, an horizontal structure point of view and also on the vertical structure point of view. When it comes to the vertical structure, we're going to look at how octaves apply to basically uh, major modes. We're going to look at Ionian, but as you quickly find out, as usual, because we apply to the cage system, uh, the finger patterns are not going to change. It doesn't matter if you're playing Ionian, Dorian, uh, Phrygian, etc. What will change is where on the neck you play those things, but you should know this by now. And we also want to look at how we can apply also octaves to pentatonics. In this case, I'm in the PDF, I looked at minor pentatonics, but once again, minor pentatonics and major pentatonics basically share the same fingerings. So once you learn the fingerings, you only have to learn how to move them around. Let's quick have a look at, at the PDFs that I created. So here you have vertical structure octaves and I wrote it in the key of G, but as usual, you know, you might want to transpose this in a lot of keys. And here is the G Ionian played in octaves, shape of E, shape of D, shape of C, shape of A, and shape of G. So this way you can cover the entire neck of the guitar. And just below you have the same, so again, octaves, shape of E, shape of, uh, oh, that's a mistake. Sorry, that should be, should be the shape of D. I'll correct it by the time I'll post this on Patreon. Shape of C, shape of A, and shape of G. And again, and this in, in case is applied to minor pentatonics. The other PDF is that it works with the horizontal structure. So we're going to up the neck. And the way you perform this is you play the two white dots, which are above sevens, then the two black dots, then the two white dots, then the two black dots, you know, so that, you know, you play, you play in octaves. And it, of course, it's grouped with this uh, sixth and fourth string, third and fifth string, uh, fourth and second string, third and first string. But also, like, I also added bigger jumps, so like you're going, say, from 6th string to 3rd string, and here is how you look at this. You're going to play these two notes first, then the 3, then the 4th, then the 5th, then the 6th, then the 7th. Same thing, 2nd um, string, 5th strings, 1st string, 4th string, and obviously, the way, given the way the guitar is tuned, the 1st and the 6th strings are octave to each other, actually, it's two octaves, as a matter of fact, and uh, the distance. And, well, you can perform this in parallel. I thought of adding it, just, you know, you never know. So let's quickly discuss this thing, this idea that, you know, the guitar ultimately works on two planes, works like both vertically and horizontally. In fact, if I play you this particular note, this pitch, like it's an E note, I can play the same pitch here, here, and here, and it's the same as that pitch. If this was a piano, that particular note would be only one place. That means that most of the time, 
when we're practicing things, we practice them both vertically and horizontally. And ultimately in time, we're gonna look at it diagonally. It's also very interesting in order to achieve more, you know, eventually more than two octaves. But say in this case, in studying octaves, we're gonna study them, we're gonna practice in them. Basically, hopefully you will practice them for the next three weeks, which should be enough time for you to develop a muscle memory, a photographic memory. But if I take G, I can play it horizontally in octaves. But obviously I can also play it, if I, I'm gonna start from the major seven just to stay within the cage kind of system. Obviously, I can also play it vertically, and that's why the, the, the PDF are designed to, you know, uh, they are describing both the approaches. Now, the PDF is quite self-explanatory in a way, so you might want to spend uh, some time studying them. I mean, there is no much uh, really I can add to that in terms of, okay, here are the exercises and, you know, just basically learn the five cages, etc. Of course, manual pentatonics also is a very interesting uh, uh, scale. To, to which uh, we can apply um, pentatonics in order to phrase. And it's not uncommon, like, especially when we connect the shapes, once you learn them, you know, the kind of phrasing. <laughs> very common, these kind of things, when it comes to jazz, as I mentioned, when it comes to blues. But as I say, don't forget, we can always think, you know. You know, kind of typical kind of stuff that you would end up. You know, if I plug the slide overdrive, now I'm playing some sort of you know indie rock type of feel. So don't perceive the studies of double stops and in this case octaves as something that you know is is jazz or is blues, etc. It's a fantastic Kenny Barrell tune actually, which was covered by Stevie Ray Vaughan. I'm gonna play the first few notes, hopefully. YouTube is not gonna be like, oh, you're infringing copyrights and stuff, so. That's the very first line of that. By the way, you might have noticed most of the time I tend to play octaves using pick and one finger, but uh, Wes Montgomery used to do it with, uh, with, with his thumb. You know, search it on YouTube if you're not familiar with Wes Montgomery work. <laughs> Reason being that you know he felt he felt overall that you would get a warmer sound playing with the thumb as opposed to play with a pick, and of course you can use the pick. Just be careful to the muting, because especially when you're playing a, a jump of uh, two strings or a jump of one string, you might want to be able to mute. Make sure that maybe you might want to use these two fingers, and of course this finger is muting the string below to mute what's above, right? I prefer using pick and finger, which makes like a, I can select the strings a little bit better, but there is no right way or wrong way to do this. Um, when it comes to pentatonics, I was saying, so again, we can look, I, I wrote to the PDF so that you have them within literally the scale. These kind of ideas, and this comes from... And of course you have it multiplied all the five shapes. As I said, like all the PDFs are quite self-explanatory, so probably I should not waste your time going through the motion or something that is kind of uh, is kind of clear. If anything, like I wanted to, uh, well, to play for you a little bit, and what I mean is, like, I want to record a couple of loops and so that I can show you some some applications, like you know, some possible idea for phrasing, so that you know when you practice, you can do it yourself. So give me literally, like, a, well, actually. In a, in YouTube time, it means uh, no time at all, but I'm going to pause the recording for a second, uh, create a couple of loops, and then I'll come back. Thank you. 
makes sense. In the case I was playing just a simple progression, which was A minor Dorian, and going to C minor Dorian, and just bouncing back and forth using uh, octaves over the scales, over the Dorian scale, and also like uh, using the pentatonics, the minor pentatonics. Uh, as an exercise, as I say, like if you think in terms of three weeks to learn to have a muscle memory of this, I would say spending like maybe like one, one week and a half. Just basically, like, learn the PDFs. Just go up and down. Don't have to do it fast. Just, as I said, you're trying to learn the muscle memory of it and create a photographic memory of it. You're not, you know, there's plenty of time after that. If you can walk, you can run. That's basically the concept underlining all these studies. And then start putting together some very simple chord progression. Maybe, like, uh, improvise over one chord and then maybe a chord progression with two chords. Uh, you can do it in a diatonic manner, so it's like everything is in the key of... I don't know, G or C or E flat. And and then you can move into progressions like the one I just played, where you're actually bouncing back and forth in between two different keys. And you can, you know, apply modes to this. You can apply of course, major pentatonic, minor pentatonic. You know. At the end of the day, try and learn things, but then ten, try and apply straight away. So create some 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 exercises that you can use just to do that. And of course, if you're a patron supporter, you can use any of the backing tracks. Uh, where you will find, um, if you subscribe to the advanced uh, Patreon supporters, which is still like, I think, uh, around $9 a month. And, um, and there's plenty of bacon tracks you can just load and use and apply well, any, any stuff that I'm talking about uh, to those. Um, that's it for this lesson. It's rather short, but at the end of the day, as I say, the PDFs are very self-explanatory. So, as usual, uh, if you have any question about it, feel free to, uh, to drop a comment on uh, YouTube. But of course, if you're a patron, feel free to send me a message there. I'll, I'll be more than happy to help you. And um, uh, next three weeks, if I'm counting it right, it might be into the new year, 2023. So I take this chance to wish you all uh, a wonderful Christmas time and I wish you already like a fantastic uh, new year. Thank you for uh, for the support once again. Thank you for listening to me talking about guitar. And uh, yeah, see you next year. Bye.